Hi, in this video I am going to be talking about the presentation diagnosis, differential prognosis, and treatment for reactive arthritis. Hi, my name is Chris, and let's get to some science. So this video comes from the fact that I was on the floors in medicine, and one of my patients had reactive arthritis, supposedly, and I was told that I needed to give a presentation about it, kind of like a verbal, something pretty much like this. Um, so I went online, found one of the most recent articles on PubMed, scrolled through it, found some interesting things, and here I am now talking about it. So first, so reactive arthritis used to also be called Rider syndrome, and you're probably familiar with that if you're also an MS3 like myself and have checked out sketches, you can see it like in the uh, chlamydia sketchy, right? So the pirate. So. It used to be called Ryder syndrome, but this has gone out of favor because this was named after Hans Conrad Julius Ryder, who was part of the Nazi movement and was actually part of the Nazi racial hygiene program. And uh, he did a lot of rheumatologic stuff, but that's he was the one that had it coined after, even though he improperly diagnosed it. Um, and he wasn't even the first one to diagnose it. Some other interesting historical facts about reactive arthritis is that it's suspected that it is what Christopher Columbus uh, died from. So here we are talking about kind of this monumental disease and kind of how do we look at it. So as I said, there is a microbiology component specifically with chlamydia. Um, some other factors as well that you can be looking at aside from chlamydia would be Campylobacter, Salmonella, Shigella, Yersinia pestis. Um, as a couple, and as, al as always, we can always throw an E. coli into the mix as well. So the pathogenesis. So what's suspected is that when these bacterial infections occur, there is a increased risk for the certain antigens to be presented onto T cells and because T cells with a certain type of MHC receptor, specifically the HLA-B27, which we know as kind of a four-pronged like disease, so your pair is the mnemonic, so your psoriasis, ankylosing spondylitis, your IBDs, and your R is for your reactive arthritis for B27. Um, the pathogenesis of like really how B27 affects it can be a different video. Because in this video, I just want to talk about reactive arthritis a little bit. So the primary infection is kind of what we already talked about. So if you have urinary symptoms, it's probably a chlamydia issue. If you have other issues regarding like diarrhea or diarrhea with fever, then maybe we could be looking at more like a Campylobacter salmonella shigella picture. So um, some must some so those are like the pathogenesis. Now, how do we see that this patient has right, uh, reactive arthritis? So this is usually a monoticular arthritis, so it affects a single joint, or it could be a polyarticular, but not symmetrical. So it doesn't affect both knees or both elbows. Um, and usually this monoticular arthritis kind of affects more of the lower extremities compared to the upper extremities. And it also has more of a tendency to not really go for an axial picture as well. So usually um, it'll hit more of the lumbar region instead of the thoracic and cervical. In addition to this monoarticular arthritis, you're going to be having your uveitis and then your conjunctivitis. So this is your can't see, can't pee, can't climb a tree, kind of mnemonic for reactive arthritis. So. Those are the three main things. You're also gonna get anthesis, which is pain um, where the tendons insert. And this is specifically known for like plantar fasciitis or like Achilles tendinopathy. So if you have a picture where they have a monoarticular arthritis and they have like anthesis, if I'm saying this correctly, maybe Achilles, then reactive arthritis could be on your differential. You also can get a dactylitis picture, which is little sausage fingers um, uh, as well. So that's kind of your presentation. So you also have your extra articular presentations, which is your uveitis and your conjunctivitis, which I've already talked about as well. Now, 
when the patient comes in and they have these presentations, you want to rule out some things in general, especially if you're seeing this monoarticular arthritis, and that's going to be your uh, septic arthritis. So one of the uh, ways you're going to diagnose this is through arthrocentesis, take some fluid out of the affected joint. Now when you're going to take the fluid out, you're going to want to gram, gram stain this, and if you don't find any, any bacteria on this, this is maybe possibly supportive for a reactive picture. Um, if you're seeing gram-positive cocci and clusters, then obviously you're going to throw some vank at it. Um, obviously chlamydia doesn't really show up on gram stain. Um, but uh, aside from that, you're also going to have a white blood cell picture, kind of a leukocytosis, ranging between 10 to 50,000. So those are the two main things. You can do a HLA B27 screening as well in the patient. So if they have the symptoms, uh, you drew the arthrocentesis, you're checking for B27. Then the B27 is like a 50 to 80 percent. Uh, it's found in 50 to 80 percent of people with the reactive arthritis. And so for your differential diagnosis, so we already discussed that septic arthritis is going to be something that you're going to want to look at. The other things you're going to want to look at is like a post strep or a, uh, a disseminated gonococcal infection. And this is also from an, this is also like an STI. It's going to be similar in the fact that you're going to get this enthesis. So this heel pain is not going to be able to differentiate disseminated gonococcal from your reactive. But what's going to be different is your disseminated gonococcal really should be presenting. You're going to get like the tenosynovitis, obviously, but what really should be presenting is like maybe a fever and like a general leukocytosis. Um, some other differentials that you're going to want to look at is some like viral inflammatory arthritis, like maybe from the like Coxsackie or something like this. Eh? So the difference with this is as well, you're probably going to be getting a fever, where reactive arthritis, you're not really having a fever. So you want the fever myalgias for like this viral picture. Um, and... If you have setting where you have this arthritis in setting of long-standing diarrhea, you could consider Campylo or Salmonella or Shigella, but these really, I mean, or Yersinia, but these are like really not, if it's really long, long-standing, right, then like Bichette's or like Crohn's should be kind of creeping up on your differential where like Bichette's is like your Middle Eastern man with your aphthous ulcers and like your pathogen skin test, da, 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 all these keywords, and Crohn's disease as well, which is going to have like a very similar picture, potentially with the arthritis. Um, so those are two things you're going to want to kind of also keep on your differential if you have this diarrhea with this arthritic picture. Some other things that this paper mentions as well is going to be like this post streptococcal arthritis, which I want to get into a little bit, and as well, since I live in the Northeast, uh, Lyme. So classic Lyme, you're going to want to check for. So this post cocal arthritis. So this was the differential for our patient as well because she was treated originally a few days prior for strep. I was at hospital, didn't really fully explain if like how it was diagnosed, like whether it was like a rapid antigen test or rapid rapid uh, strep test. Um, but here we drew ASOs on her, which came back negative anti streptolysino So ASOs came back negative for her, but she was treated already with outside hospitals. So I really don't know how long ASOs stay in the system. Maybe someone can talk tell in the comment section. But so yeah, so for this, right? So this can occur. You can get like a reactive arthritis picture from post-strep. This usually happens in a shorter time frame. has been more documented in uh, case reports within pediatric populations. And it really doesn't, and that they're, the long story short, they're trying to differentiate that from the Jones criteria from like a ARF picture and the classic Jones picture where you do have the joint issues. So it is possible, but there is also a slim chance that there's a post strep issue where you go and want to order your ASOs and double check this as well. So that was your differential. And now how do we treat this? So treating with this, so usually people with reactive arthritis are gonna get better within six to 12 months, just generally. In order to symptomatically treat, you are going to want to give them NSAIDs. The paper says that, what was it? Naproxen, 500 milligram BID, is gonna be your treatment of choice for two weeks. And with that, they're usually gonna be getting better as well. Um, Giving them antibiotics right off the bat will only be beneficial if the underlying cause of their reactive arthritis is from a 
bacterial infection. So like your penicillins or whatever for your cinea, but your campylobacter, I mean, just appropriately treating whatever underlying infection it is. Um, if the NSAIDs don't work, so if naproxen doesn't work, the next step that you're gonna to wanna to go toward is gonna to be your glucocorticoids. So gonna give inter interarticular injections in these specific areas, hopefully that helps. If that doesn't help, then you're going to be going after your DMARDs. And for the DMARDs, you're gonna be going to either be giving sulfasalazine or methotrexate. So if these two work, then that's fine. And if those don't work for your reactive arthritis, and this is like after you've been trying all the other ones, then you're gonna go down to these like uh, TNF alpha like uh, inhibitors. So like your Atanercept, your Adalumab, um, Infliximab as well, classic. And then you're gonna give those. So if those help out with it, then that's gonna be good. But once again, I mean, approximately six to 12 months, you're gonna get like full resolution of symptoms with reactive arthritis. So that was kind of like my blurb about reactive arthritis, formerly known as Ryder syndrome. I hope it helped you out um, and comment any questions you have in the comment section below. Thanks.